Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and Another Versus Night. Tonight, I will be comparing The Poseidon Adventure from 1972 with The Towering Inferno from 1974. So, let's begin this one with The Leads. The Poseidon Adventure stars Gene Hackman, and Ernest Borgnine. The Towering Inferno stars Steve McQueen and Paul Newman. Now this one's a tough one because um, both the leads in both these movies do really great in their roles, um, especially Gene Hackman and Paul Newman. Um, in their respective films. Um, Ernest Borgnine holds his own against Gene Hackman and some of the scenes that they are interacting in, in there, he does really well holding his own right next to Gene Hackman. Um, Steve McQueen, his character doesn't get introduced till good 30, 40 minutes into um, the Towering Inferno, um, and, uh, when he does, he's just barking orders, and, uh, being a, uh, a horse's ass to, uh, Paul Newman, um, both on screen and off, apparently, um, because Steve McQueen, um, didn't want Paul Newman to outshine him in this film. He uh, he was originally offered Paul Newman's architect role in this film. Um, but when he read the script, he liked the uh, fire chief um, character the best because he thought he was this heroic figure in the film. So, he lobbied to play that role instead. And then, got upset because he re was reading the script and realized that Paul Newman had 12 more lines than him. Well, Paul Newman was in the movie a lot more than you, Steve. So I'm sorry. <laughs> you picked a role that doesn't get introduced till later in the film, so you shouldn't have as many lines as Paul Newman when Paul Newman is all the way through the movie from beginning to end. Um, but yeah, um, his role in this, anyway, I mean, he... Like I said, he barks a lot of orders, and he does a couple of rescue things uh, near the closing moments of the film. But other than that, Paul Newman is the one that shines in this film the most. Um, so for the leads, I am going to go with... I was thinking I was going to go with a tie, but... Um, like I said, Steve McQueen doesn't really uh, stand out as much as Paul Newman does in there. And it's not that way with The Poseidon Adventure. Like I said, Ernest Borgnine holds his own next to Gene Hackman. So I'm going to go with uh, Poseidon Adventure on this one. All right, now we move on to supporting. Supporting cast on The Poseidon Adventure includes Red Buttons, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters, Pamela Sue Martin, and Leslie Nielsen. The supporting cast in The Towering Inferno includes William Holden, Faye Dunaway, Fred Astaire, Susan Blakely, Richard Chamberlain, O.J. Simpson, Robert Vaughn, 
Robert Wagner, and, ironically, the only actor that is in both films is John Crawford. He played a role in Poseidon Adventure, and he also played a role in The Towering Inferno. Um, but that's not the only uh, other person that's involved behind the scenes. There's actually four people that are all across the board are between these two films. There's John Crawford as an actor. He's in both films. And then your composer that does the music is the legendary John Williams, who composed the music for the Poseidon Adventure and then later on composed the music for the Towering Inferno as well. And then there is the screenwriter, Sterling Siliphant, and the producer, Erwin Allen. So, four people were working between the two films. So that's something you don't get many, many times with these films. Um, but as far as a uh, supporting cast, um, you would think uh, it would be uh, The Towering Inferno because, my God, those are, that is a great cast there. Um, nobody on the Poseidon Adventure and the uh, supporting cast uh, is as big as, you know, William Holden, Faye Dunaway, um, Fred Astaire, um, Richard Chamberlain, Robert Vaughn, or Robert Wagner. Um, so, uh, yeah, as good as, as much as I love, you know, Roddy McDowell, um, Red Buttons, um, Leslie Nielsen, um, those aren't as big a names as the ones that are in the Towering Inferno. Um, but the ones in Towering Inferno, the ones that really shine and that play pretty good parts in this, in, in the Towering Inferno are William Holden, Faye Dunaway, and, uh, Richard Chamberlain. They get the major, um, parts in the film that they stand out more. Um, some of the other characters are not, uh, really, um, but I will get more on them when I get to story. Um, but for names though, I mean, I, I'm going to have to give this one to <sighs> the Towering Inferno just because, I mean, it is a, uh, great cast. Um, that they put together for this thing. All right. So let's move on to story. The story on the Poseidon Adventure is a luxury liner is overturned by a tsunami. And the survivors have to try to do everything they can to make it above, you know, up to the area as the boat is sinking. Um, they need to get to the top um, so that they don't drown. Um, so that it, when somebody does come to rescue them, they can cut them out and they will be up there already close by. Um, very interesting and really well staged, well put together uh, story. The story doesn't meander. It pretty much starts right off. Uh, Leslie Nielsen plays the captain. Um, so he's only in there for a little bit at the beginning and then him and everybody else who's, you know, in, in his captain's deck or around where he's at, they get killed. Um, but the way that they wrote, um, Gene Hackman, he's this preacher character. 
he's a very unorthodox preacher to say the least. Um, but he is very charismatic character. Um, and he gets a lot of the people that end up uh, surviving a while with him alongside of him to band together with him. Some of them don't listen and they die. Um, the uh, character that butts heads with uh, Gene Hackman throughout the film is, of course, Ernest Borgnine. And uh, part of the reason I think that they, they butt heads is because they are so much alike as characters. Um, they both are very uh, much wanting to be in control and um, they don't take well with someone else wanting to take control. And that's what Gene Hackman does. And Ernest Borgnine's character is this uh, ex-police officer who just, you know, butts heads with him because he's the one. He's like, who, why are you in charge? And uh, it, it's just so well written, the scenes with these characters. Um, Red Buttons is an amazing character in this. Uh, very likable. Um, I loved his character. Roddy McDowell is very charismatic and very good, and he's just this sweetheart of a of a guy uh, that was working as uh, like a waiter or something um, on the uh, on the Poseidon whenever the uh, tsunami happened. Um, Stella Stevens and Shelley Winters and uh, Pamela Sue Martin are great as your female characters and they are so well written as characters. Shelley Winters looks like she's going to be this really annoying character that is not going to do anything but sit and bitch and moan and complain. But by the end of the film, she is so well written that she ends up saving Gene Ackman's life at one point in the film. And that is good writing whenever you can make someone like Shelley Winters playing a character and she becomes a heroic figure in the film. Um, so very, very well written. Um, Towering Inferno on the other side of the spectrum, um, a fire breaks out in a glass tower, one of the largest buildings in the world, supposedly, um, while firefighters and everything try their best to get up to the area where the fire's at and uh, get it taken care of, but it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and uh, you got stupid people in the building that aren't listening. Um, and uh, then, of course, you have Paul Newman's character as the architect that was responsible for the building, but he didn't know that William Holden, his character, and Richard Chamberlain's character, uh, William Holden's character's son-in-law, um, he didn't know that they were uh, penny-pinching and cutting down on stuff that this building needed to run properly. And that's how the fire basically starts. In fact, before the fire even starts, um, Paul Newman's character figures out that there's something, you know, wrong. And he even confronts William Holden's character and Richard Chamberlain's character, but they don't listen, of course. And, uh, the big fire breaks out, and um, the the writing on this one is just a bit too. Uh, they, they've added too many characters that are completely unnecessary to the story. Um, I mean, you have uh, Fred Astaire's character, who's this con man, um, and he's trying to con this. Uh, rich woman into um, buying some bonds, fake bonds from him and everything. And 
this is like 20 minutes of, I mean, this movie is almost three hours long. It is two, it is two hours and 46, 47 minutes long. And it's just over bloated. There's too much um, in here. And none of it really amounts to shit. Um, you know, f the Fred Astaire and, and the, the rich woman uh, storyline. And, and the rich woman, they, they later on take her on, on, a, on the elevator down. And she should go down all the way. But she stops and goes to uh, check on this deaf woman and her two kids. And then she gets involved in a story in a in a branching area of the story in which she is with Paul Newman trying to help get the kids to safety. Um which um would be fine if it was going to lead to this woman dying tragically, which they have a setup for it, and it doesn't happen. She survives. She makes it to um, back to the party scene, being able to reunite with Fred Astaire's character, um, in which he confesses that he's a con artist, and then she says, I know! And, and it's just like, why? Why is this here? And then... They put her on another elevator, and the elevator dislodges. She falls against the glass, and she falls out the window, and she fucking dies anyway. What was the point? And she dies, and there's no impact to the death. She falls out the window. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares until the very end of the movie after everything is over and resolved and Fred Astaire survives, makes it to the ground floor and is looking for her, thinking she made it down the elevator and he finds out she's dead. And it's like, It was an unnecessary moment that could have cut 20 minutes from your from your runtime right there. And those moments with a woman helping Paul Newman to rescue these two kids could have been Faye Dunaway. You could have given her a lot more to do in this film instead of this random woman. Um, and, you know, and then there's uh, Robert Vaughn and uh, Robert Wagner. And neither one of their characters are really anything for the story. The, you know, uh, Robert Vaughn should have been playing the mayor. Instead, he's playing some other politician guy um, and doesn't really get anything to do. Uh, until very near the end, and and he dies, and nobody gives a shit about him dying either, because he's trying to stop Richard Chamberlain's asshole character from, you know, stacking too many people on this chair that they're trying to wheel across from to a, a neighboring building to escape, and they all frickin' die, because they're all there, and, and he's part of it. He, he ends up falling off and dying as well, and it's nothing. Nobody cares. But the mayor was a character that was a pretty good character in this, and he's well well done in the storyline. They could have just made Robert Vaughn the mayor. He was could have been playing the mayor, because they didn't get a big actor to play the mayor. So they could have gotten Vaughn to play the mayor, and all the stuff that he did and, you know, he could have been merged with the same things that he was doing as his politician, as the mayor. And it would have made him a much better character in the film. Um, but Robert Wagner, he shows up earlier in the film, has a couple of scenes with Paul Newman and William Holden, and um, then he goes off to 
to a secret rendezvous where he's having this secret affair with his secretary. And then they realize the fire has started and they both get killed. What was the point of this character being in it? There's another one that that could have been another five minutes. So that's 25 minutes you could have trimmed off this movie right there um, and made it more of a runtime similar to what Poseidon Adventure had. Poseidon Adventure was very well structured, well put together. It didn't never lag. It didn't have any moments that felt like, oh, this is, what, what the hell is this doing in here? Um, it was... It was a much better story, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give story to the Poseidon Adventure. All right, let's move on to direction. I know I meandered and rambled a little bit on that story, but I had to get around to all the characters and all the uh, story moments um, that I wanted to talk about. Um, Poseidon Adventure is directed by Ronald Neme. Meanwhile, Towering Inferno is directed by John Gillerman. Now, Ronald Neme, I don't know much about him as far as other things that he directed. Um, I might have seen some, some other stuff that he's directed, but I just don't recognize the name as much. But... He did direct um, the Poseidon Adventure very, very well. Um, uh, so I would like to see more stuff that he has done. Um, but um, John Gwillerman um, is a really good director. I really like him as a director. He uh, also directed the 1970s King Kong movie uh, starring Jeff Bridges. And uh, that was a great film. I, I love that King Kong film. Um, but I don't think it's his direction that is the problem with The Towering Inferno. I think he directs some really good action sequences and some great moments in here. And I don't think it's his problem that the film is so bloated. I think that's the story. So I'm not going to blame the director on that. That's that's the writing for it. Um, I think uh, both of these directors did a hell of a job on their films. I don't hate um, The Towering Inferno as a film. I mean, I just hate that they over bloated it and made it too long um, with too many unnecessary characters and stuff. But um, for this one, I, I'm going to go with um, the Poseidon Adventure. So if you're keeping track of the numbers, that means uh, Poseidon Adventure wins in this versus night. Three to one. So, what do you think of these two movies? Do you disagree? And do you think that Towering Inferno is the better film out of these two films? Or do you agree that The Poseidon Adventure is the best out of these two films? Let me know in those comments down below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're by the subscribe button, click that join button and become a Dark Knight fan. All right. This is the end of another Versus Night. Hope you will join me tomorrow for another horror movie night. Thanks for watching.